When people start seriously getting into photography, they usually start learning the exposure triangle. Eventually, they'll stumble upon pages or videos trying to find the perfect setting or the hack to every single picture taken. Well, I'll say this right now, stop wasting your time. You're not going to find it because it doesn't exist. If you end up walking around with the settings of, let's say a one over 250 shutter speed, 100 ISO and F4, something like that, chances are your photos are not going to be what you want them to be. They'll probably be overexposed or underexposed depending on the lighting and the setting you're in. Or because maybe your aperture's at F4, maybe there's something in your frame that'll be a bit out of focus. There are many things that can go into why one would choose certain settings over another for a certain picture. What are those reasons? In this video, I'll cover why I choose certain settings and show some examples going through my thought process. As mentioned in the beginning, most of us learn the exposure triangle when we really decide to start wanting to get better in photography. We can separate those settings into three, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. They each play a role into how your picture ends up looking. Your shutter speed can either be fast or slow. Having a slow shutter speed will make any type of motion in the photo have motion blur, whether that's you doing the moving or anything within the frame that's moving. Having a fast shutter speed lets you essentially freeze anything that's moving in your frame, such as a moving person crossing the street. With aperture, you are controlling your depth of field. The smaller the F number, or F stop is, the more shallow your depth of field is going to be. A shallow depth of field really separates your subject from the background and foreground. Another important aspect when choosing a smaller F number is the amount of light you let into your sensor. The smaller the F number is, the more light you are able to allow into your sensor of your camera. Moving on to the final part of the triangle, the ISO. Your ISO allows you to essentially brighten your image when raising it or darkening the image when lowering it. That's basically it. When I shoot in manual, that's always the last setting I touch, as there's no creative process when thinking about ISO. I just raise it or lower it, depending on the shutter speed and aperture, and that's basically it. The only catch with your ISO is if it becomes too high, you start noticing grain in your photos. But the cameras and lenses that are out nowadays allow us to really push that number further than what the limit used to be. With those three settings, they each have their own influence on your pictures. Now that we quickly went through what each portion of the exposure triangle does, I'll go over some photos I took and explain why I chose to go with those certain settings. For this first picture right here, we had the Tokyo Sky Tree. And if you haven't been there, I would highly recommend it. It's a very beautiful place and a very calming place to walk. One of my favorites in all of Tokyo, so I would highly suggest it. Uh, but for this photo, it's actually a very common photo that many photographers take when they are in this area. So it isn't anything new. I really wanted my own picture of it as well just to have my own kind of take on it uh, and just something from memory. So for this picture, the most important part is the reflection of the water on the bottom right here. And as you can see, it looks kind of like ice where you see the entire reflection of the Tokyo sky tree. And in order to get that look, you really have to slow down your shutter speed. So right here on the top right, my shutter speed is at 30 seconds. And in order to get that, I really had to just lower my aperture to whatever the lowest it can be to get that shutter speed, which was F13. In this case, I really wish I brought my intervalometer, but I didn't for this trip. The max shutter speed I can slow down to was 30 seconds. I would have actually preferred to open my shutter more, maybe at the minute range, just because it was very windy this day. I actually got pretty lucky with this picture. A lot of my other pictures, you can see the water still move because of how windy it was. Uh, this was pretty early into the sunset, so I got pretty lucky with this shot. Uh, but I was able to freeze the water because of the 30 second shutter speed. And for everything else, that kind of just supplemented that shutter speed. So my aperture F13, I wanted it to be open. I didn't really care how open it was. F13 was just that right spot to get that 30 seconds, as well as my ISO 50. Compare that to my other shot right here in Korea. Uh, with this place right here, I actually didn't want the longest shutter speed. There's two reasons why. The first reason being I couldn't even get 30 seconds if I really wanted to just because I was indoors. I didn't have my tripod and I just didn't feel comfortable putting down a tripod even, even if I was able to. So I really just chose 0.6 seconds just because I felt that was kind of the right level I needed in order to get the look I wanted, which was to see people still moving in the frame. Like you can still see the people right here, but you can tell that they're moving still and you can kind of tell how fast they're moving just from their mirage of themselves right here. So for me, this kind of shows just how kind of busy the area was because it was pretty busy. It was at 6 p.m. or so on a weekday. And this was actually inside of a mall. You can kind of see how busy the mall was at that time. With 0.6 seconds, you can see the moving people as well as some people who weren't moving at all. They were still frozen in frame, like these two people right here in the middle, or this person looking at a book right here. 
So that was my main goal for this picture. And again, everything else kind of supplemented that. So my ISO at 160, my f-stop at f8. I really just needed to set those to the point where my shutter speed would be 0.6 seconds. So with this photo right here, we have the Los Angeles skyline photo, one of my favorite photos that I've taken to date. And a little backstory for this photo, I wasn't really feeling it this morning because I was tired and I didn't think the conditions were that great at that time. But now getting the picture back and obviously editing it, it was actually a very nice cloudy day and the lighting was just perfect. Uh, but for this photo, uh, the settings are 1 1,000th of a second, f1.8 at ISO 100. For this photo, some people may ask, why is your shutter speed so high? Well, for this photo, I didn't have my tripod. My main concern for this photo was, am I gonna get any shakiness, especially when I'm hand holding this camera? So I really wanted to ensure that the picture was very, very sharp in terms of not having any motion blur. That was my main priority, which is why I had a 1,000th of a second. And ISO 100, that kind of just supplemented everything else. For my F1.8, the reason why I wanted 1.8 was again, to increase my shutter speed. But also, I knew that because the buildings were so far away from me, the distance I was at was beyond infinity for everything in the frame. So being wide open doesn't really matter. It has no effect. I just wanted to have a fast enough shutter speed so I wouldn't have any blurriness in my photo. Compared to this photo, for this photo it was during a night market. And like the name suggests, it was at night. So it was pretty dark. And the only lighting that you had were from the vendors, like this picture right here, showing this man giving some uh, juice or drink. And for this photo, the settings are 1 400th of a second, f1.8 and ISO 1000. So for this, the shutter speed, I needed to freeze the frame. I need to freeze the picture. In order to get that, I would need a fast enough shutter speed. I needed everything else to coincide with that setting. So f1.8, obviously it's very easy to get a fast shutter speed if you have a fast lens, which is why fast lenses are so important during night photography. For this, I was using the Zeiss 85 millimeter Battis 1.8. So I just basically had that wide open the entire night. And because I knew my aperture would be wide open for the whole entire shoot, I was basically just controlling the ISO and fluctuating the ISO to get the shutter speed I want. For this, I needed the ISO 1000 yet 1 400th of a second. So that's basically the only kind of thought process I had during this picture. Everything else was put into composing the picture, getting to the right spot, getting the right timing, and so on and so forth. For this picture right here, we have the Santa Monica Beach. And in the background, you see the Santa Monica Pier and also the kind of carnival attractions that you find on the Santa Monica Pier. And then more towards the foreground in the picture, you see these two men swinging. And for this, the settings I have for this picture are 1 3,200 of a second, f5.0, and ISO 250. I chose F5 because I didn't want my depth of field to be too shallow. As I focus on the people swinging, having my aperture set at F5 lets the viewer still be able to see the pier and the amusement park with the roller coaster and the Ferris wheel. Honestly, I wish I would have went even lower with my aperture and set it around F8 or something, as you can still see the back isn't as clear as it could be. But viewing it from a normal perspective and distance, the final picture shows what I wanted to show. So I'm pretty happy with the result. Every other setting just coincided with my aperture. I didn't really care about my shutter speed as long as it wasn't slow, which I knew it wouldn't be because of the time of day. For ISO, as said before, controls how bright your image is, so I just set my ISO based on what I wanted from my aperture and shutter speed to get the correct exposure that I wanted. Your exposure settings aren't supposed to be fixed. They should be changing to fit with what your vision is for what you want the picture to be. Whether that's having a high enough shutter speed or having a shallow depth of field, everyone's setting is going to be different, even if they're at the same location. There's no right or wrong answer. Also, I mentioned before the examples that I use manual mode when shooting, but that's really only for five or 10% of my shots. For the majority of the photos I take, I shoot in aperture priority mode. This essentially allows me to control only aperture, which is the most important for most photos taken anyways. And that's the setting that I want to control for every single shot I take. The camera then controls the shutter speed based on what I choose for ISO and aperture. I've talked about using aperture priority in my street photography tips video, so check that out if you want to see more about that. That's all for me this week. I'll talk to y'all later.